Coming up tonight on YCN News, we'll bring you the final part of our interview with Dr. Herford about Valley Regional Hospital. Snow removal happens tonight in Lebanon, and a building near collapse may be torn down soon. For more news, weather, and sports, it's time for YCN, your local view. Now, your daily digest of the Dartmouth Lake Sunapee region, Southern Vermont, and Windsor County. News, sports, weather, and all that is happening in our area. The news on YCN, your local view. Good evening, it's Tuesday, February 10th. I'm Laura James. Welcome to YCN News. It's one of the most highly contagious diseases and one that can be prevented with a vaccine. Measles continues to be in the news following an outbreak of this illness in a California theme park. Measles vaccinations are part of the MMR prevention. That's measles, mumps, and rubella. Sometimes rubella is called the German measles or the three-day measles. Today, YCN News continues our interview with Valley Regional Hospital Medical Director Oliver Herford. Vaccinations against measles are the best way to contain the disease. From a public health standpoint, mm -hmm. is it um, discouraging that the measles is, is <coughs> back again, or is it to be expected? No, it's not really to be expected. I mean, that's, that's really, a, you know, a, a, it's a tragedy. It's a minor tragedy, but a disease that was almost eradicated now is back because people are, um, or parents are less inclined to vaccinate their children. It's not specific to the United States. It happened in, in Europe actually a little bit earlier because it, the vaccine skepticism started there um, a little bit ahead of here. Uh, but we have seen it in other countries happen, and um, that's very unfortunate in my eyes because a disease that almost disappears you know, um, would have been a great triumph for, for medicine and public health. Um, so that's, <clears throat> but possibly this outbreak raises awareness again that this is not a disease that is, you know, minor. Um, so hopefully it's something good coming out of that. To learn more about measles, go to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention website. Well, it's no secret that we are having a winter. Record amounts of snowfall across our region are the norm, with more likely to come. In Lebanon, the city's Public Works Department reminds all that the ever-growing mounds of snow will be picked up for removal beginning tonight at 10 p.m. Snow removal in this Upper Valley City will continue through Thursday morning. To make the work go faster and more efficient for public work crews, there will be no on-street parking throughout this time. Now, the key time the cars need to be off the street are between 10 p.m. in the morning. Feel free to call Lebanon Public Works Department with any questions. In a follow-up story we reported last week, the days are numbered for an old grain building on Claremont's Pleasant Street. City Project Manager Kurt Beek tells YCA News that a contract to tear down the worn-out structure at 157 Pleasant Street has been awarded to Pine Hill Construction based in Charlestown, New Hampshire. It will cost the city just over $51,000 to raise the multi-level site. The company is checking for asbestos in the building. If asbestos is found and deemed to be a problem, work will need to be done to remediate this once popular heat and corrosion resistant material. Beek says the city had hoped to have started the demolition project by now, but the winter weather is interrupting this timeline, perhaps by spring, said Beek. Turning to Vermont State News, public safety officials are in Colorado on a fact-finding mission to learn how marijuana legalization in that state is working out. Pot in Colorado became legal in 2013. Vermont Governor Peter Shumlin earlier said he's in favor of legalizing cannabis. First, he's taking a cautious approach, sending Department of Public Safety Commissioner Keith Flynn, Chittenden County State Attorney T.J. Donovan, and several child and health care experts to the West. Flynn, in a statement, says Vermont wants to learn from Colorado, the first state in the nation to legalize pot. Vermont is thinking of the same plan. It could bring in millions of dollars in revenue. Vermonters on the visit will meet with Colorado Governor John Hickenlooper and the U.S. Attorney in Denver. The plan also is to speak with Colorado residents plus tour pot growing facilities. Washington, Oregon and Alaska also have legalized marijuana. Pot for medical reasons is legal in Vermont and New Hampshire. 
Also in Vermont, Governor Shumlin is keeping an eye on its youngest residents' needs. Today, he announced the Promise Community Initiative, a one-stop plan where services affecting children's health education and welfare can be addressed. The Vermont plan is modeled after the successful Harlem Children's Zone in New York City. If selected, a city or town will receive support and financial help over two years. The first year calls for mapping out a strategy to serve young children. The second year comes with grants up to $200,000 to make the plan a reality. Children from birth to age six are the focus of the plan. More than one school can work with another school or regional school district. This is important because the Promise community works best when 40 children are involved. March 18th is the deadline to apply. Six groups will be selected from throughout Vermont. To learn more, you can check out the website. A webinar by the Agency of Human Services, Child Development Division is set for February 18th. After the break, we'll have more news from around our region. The YCN News continues in a moment. And news, I'm Laura James. New Hampshire Department of Safety Commissioner John Barthelms will be nominated to a second term by Governor Maggie Hassan. Hassan praised Barthelms in a statement she issued today, saying the Granite State continues to be one of the safest in the nation. His work centers on leading an agency of first responders, especially in severe storms. And something done every year by residents who go to the motor vehicle registry to renew driver licenses Barthelm served for over 20 years with the state police and other public safety boards. He says he's glad to do this work and appreciates the governor's support. Residents of Newport, New Hampshire will elect two members to its school board March 10th when the town holds its school district elections. The Eagle Times reports that three candidates are vying for the two seats, though a third seat is expected to open March 9th when current school board member Karen Little is slated to resign. Now, of the candidates, Heidi North is the lone incumbent. She's seeking re-election to a second three-year term. And Spencer, a professor at New England College and Granite State College, and Deanna Armstrong, a seven-year veteran of the Newport School District, are also seeking election to the board. The second seat became available when board chairman Liz Hennig announced she wouldn't be seeking re-election. The Vermont State Police are investigating a former Plymouth town clerk accused of writing fraudulent checks totaling about $20,000. 57-year-old Barbara Stone of Newport, New Hampshire, allegedly cashed several checks written out to herself between April 2014 and January 2015 while serving as the Plymouth Town Clerk. Plymouth Town officials told the Rutland Herald they requested the investigation after discrepancies were noticed in several accounts. Stone, who resigned from her position January 3rd, is scheduled to be arraigned March 17th at the Windsor County Court. Two members of New Hampshire's congressional delegation are speaking out against the death of American aid worker Caleb Mueller. U.S. Senator Kelly Ayotte and U.S. Representative Annie Custer agree that more must be done to stop the threat of the terrorist group. Mueller's death was confirmed by state officials and her parents. She was 26 and a graduate of Virginia Commonwealth University. Mueller was captured in 2013 by ISIS militants, a retaliatory bombing raid by the Jordan military after one of his soldiers was savagely killed resulted in Mueller's death. When YCN News returns, we'll learn more about fitness programs at the Claremont Community Center. The YCN News continues in a moment. Welcome back to YCN News. Let's look at that current forecast now and check in with Matt McDonald. Thanks, Laura. Tonight will be partly cloudy with a low around negative 1. Wednesday will be mostly sunny with a high near 22. Wind chills may reach as low as negative 1. Wednesday night we may have snow showers after 2 a.m. with a low around 5. Thursday, snow is likely with a high near 22. And Thursday night, snow is likely with a low around 7. And now it's time for our YCN Community Calendar Preview. You can see the full calendar online at ycnnow.com calendar. Wednesday in Charlestown, New Hampshire, there will be bingo at the Memorial VFW Post. Event time is from 5 to 9 p.m. On Thursday in Newport, there will be income tax prep available at the Newport Senior Center from 8.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. 
Tonight in YCN Sports, we have some local high school sports games to check out on Wednesday. The Sunapee Lakers boys basketball team will host Epping tomorrow evening. The Sunapee girls team will travel to Pittsfield for a game. There will be two boys hockey games tomorrow. One will see Kearsarge host Manchester West. The other will see Lebanon host Pembroke Campbell. Check out one of these games if you can. Thanks, Matt. When YC News returns, we'll join Capital Connections' John O'Connor. We'll have part two of his conversation with Jeff Barrett. The YCN News continues in a moment.